get started. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Nina Ward. I am with Show Me KC Schools. And today we are here to have a fun little virtual elementary school tour. Um, so today we're going to learn about a couple of our elementary school options in Kansas City. Before we get started, I do want to briefly touch on who Show Me KC Schools is and what we do. So we support families in navigating the education landscape in Kansas City. So by doing that, we provide a number of different services for families to include tours like this and also in-person school tours. We also have workshops that we have that provide families with different information on navigating the education landscape and also navigating certain aspects of the education journey once students are in school. Um, we also have a annual city school fair that normally happens in November when our application opens for School App KC. School App KC is another one of our programs through Show Me KC Schools that provides families the ability to apply to several different schools in the KC metro area with one simple application. Um, we also have our website that provides family information on um, different school options with details on contact information, different metrics and things needed for their education journey and assessing what schools will be a good fit for their students. So today we're going to talk to a few different schools. We did have something happen with ACE Prep. So we are going to shift gears just a little bit. Um, we are gonna hear from Gordon Parks first, and then actually we have Citizens of the World joining us. And in addition to that, Crossroads Charter School. Um, I do want to pause here with some important dates for application season. We are approaching deadlines for applications. So I just wanna pause there so families recognize those dates. Kansas City Public School District, their deadline. Um, Danielle, can you remind me when their deadline is for signature school applications? I feel like it just passed and maybe they're giving out offers on the 27th. Yes, so they, um, Kansas City Public Schools, which would have encompassed ACE um, this morning or African Center College Prep, the deadline um, to be included in lotteries was on Friday, um, February. Yep, see, look, I'm going to do that. Um, and then, yes, uh, notifications will be going out next week. However, um, I still highly encourage families to apply if they're interested. Um, and it's always, applications are always open. The deadlines are just to be included in lotteries. Absolutely. And the deadline to be included in the lottery for schools that participate in School App KC is March 1st. And so several of our schools presenting today are a part of that application. So I encourage them to remind you of their deadlines and let you know when you can expect um, lottery notifications to go out. So I will stop sharing my screen. And then I will hand it over to Gordon Parks to start us off. Good morning, everyone. My name is Micah Weaver. I am the family advocate at Gordon Parks Elementary. Um, thank you all for showing up. I have been with Gordon Parks. This is my ninth school year. So I have been here and seen a lot and all of the evolution that has occurred um, with Gordon Parks. So I will attempt to do the screen sharing um, right now. Um, or, okay, you know what, okay, um, share, alrighty, is everyone able to see my slide, yes, thumbs up, okay, perfect, um, just want to give you an overview about Gordon Parks, so we are a charter school in Kansas City, we are located at 3715 Wyoming, which is in the Volcker neighborhood. It is just north of Westport. This is our 25th year um, as a charter school. So we are very excited to be serving the children and families um, for such a long time. We are currently K through fourth grade. Um, as a matter of fact, our fourth graders are actually touring Kaufman um, this morning in um, preparation to um, matriculate to the next grade. So we're really excited about that. Um, 
we have been, since I've been here, we have had the traditional school year. Um, last year, beginning June 10th, we transitioned to what's called an extended school year. So that means our school year ends in May as normal. We end this year, I think like May 19th. Um, but then we will begin school again on June 12th of this year. This was our first year with an extended school year. So that added an additional 31 academic days to our calendar. And so one of the reasons why our administration decided to move to the extended school year is one is to make up for losses during um, the pandemic, during COVID. Our students, the transition to virtual learning was um, difficult for some families and some families didn't have the capacity as much as we all work um, as hard to keep our kids um, and our students on track, it just wasn't completely possible. So we wanted to add those days, extend the school year to make up for that. Also the high cost um, and need of childcare. So we have um, a longer school year, so parents don't have to pay as much um, for childcare since they have less days. We also partner with the after school program through Campfire and Parks and Rec to provide after school care and they provide summer and break camps also for a nominal fee. So we wanted to, to help do that. So we've modified our, our calendar. So um, this year we are, we're very um, traditional once we week August, but in June, we'll start school in June. Um, the 12th, and then we will go for three weeks. So that would be those three weeks in June. The students and staff have the full first week of July off. Then they will go to school again for three weeks in July. And then we will have the first three weeks of August off. And then the school will be very familiar with as far as a school schedule. Um, next, our programming. We have decided to really move into project-based learning. And so we're finding this year um, that our students are more engaged. So project-based learning is designed to include all of the, all of the standards within a project-based plan. So our, our classes are working on a project base. We have three um, large projects, school-wide projects this year. Um, one is a chicken coop. Yes, we're going to have a chicken coop. Um, the students, all grades, will work with the math that is involved, the reading, all of the nature things, that everything that goes into a design to have a chicken coop, the students are doing that on their grade level. Um, the next, we're doing a pollinator garden. That's our second large um, school project that we're doing. We just had our STEM week where all of our students use their STEM week in order to work on the pollinators. And we had a science fair for our fourth graders who's, um, who's really heading up the pollinator garden. And we're also doing a photo exhibit. Um, Gordon Parks is a pioneer of photography and art. Our namesake, he was actually the first African-American photographer for Life Magazine. So in honor of that in our 25th year of school, all of our students are um, participating in a photography exhibit in which they will all present one photo um, from their community, from their family in a large exhibit that we will have at an art gallery, art gallery that will be transitioned here to the school. So that's an honor. So those are our three large projects. So we'll be doing those types of projects throughout the school year and as we go forward. We also have a thriving mentor program. And the whole ideal about that is that um, students thrive when they have um, mentors that they can look up to. They have their families, but there's also members in the community um, that can provide those type of um, examples and mentors for our students. So the goal is eventually within the next few years for each student to have a community mentor. So we're starting with our kindergarten and filling all the way up to fourth. And so the idea is that that mentor will go from kindergarten to all the way to fourth grade with our students. So they will follow them 
through their time here at Gordon Parks. And so we have doctors, we have lawyers, we have business owners that are mentors um, to our students. And then we also have a social emotional learning in which we, you know, even before COVID, we understood that the social emotional health of our students and families um, impact academics greatly. And it impacts attendance, whether they're able to concentrate in class, whether they're ever able to thrive with their peers. So all of those things. So we have um, kind of a rarity. We have a um, social emotional um, dog on staff. His name is Harvey. He belongs to one of our, he belongs to our theater teacher and he's certified as a social emotional support. And when I tell you, he's the star. Forget about the rest of us. Okay, <laughs> when it comes to Harvey, listen, they're not worried about us. <laughs> so he's been here last year and this year. And then we have a puppy in training to be another one. His name is Ollie, he's a corgi. So we will have two social emotional dogs that are here for our kids. And when they're upset, they need to um, calm down. It helps greatly. Um, we also have a care team, which I'm a part of, which includes our nurse, um, our family advocate, myself. And so I help the families navigate the social services and things like that in the community, as well as our um, family events. We also have a licensed counselor therapist on our staff um, that works with our students if they need that. Um, and then along with our project-based learning, we also have our five specials which is PE, art, music, theater, and technology. And all students receive um, that as a part of their education here at Gordon Parks. So that is all that I have. Um, if you have questions, I'll be glad to take them. Um, and if you wanna wait to the end, that's also fine. So, and I'll stop sharing my screen. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That is so awesome. I love that you all have emotional support dogs. That is amazing. Right now, we know the students have a lot of big feelings. It's a lot with all the transitions. So having those additional supports in place is amazing. We are going to, um, again, feel free to add your questions to the chat. I will monitor that throughout. And then we will also leave time at the end to um, have Q&A as well. So we did have a question come in. Is, is it a regular school day in terms of the time at school since it's an extended school year or yeah, school year? So is the time frame that students are there typical to what we see in other school settings? Um, very good question. Yes, it is. Our students arrive, um, buses start arriving at eight o'clock and we dismiss at three. So we have a very traditional day as far as school day time. Awesome, thank you. All right, we are going to shift over to Citizens of the World. Hello everyone, my name is uh, Katie Lineberry. I am the Enrollment Coordinator at Citizens. So I'm excited to tell you about, um, about Citizens today. We've got, um, yeah, so um, I've actually been a parent at the school for about five years uh, and been on staff for a couple of years. So I uh, I love being able to share my different perspectives of our school community, um, which we fell in love with pretty quickly as soon as our family joined. So um, we are pre-K, we actually go up to eighth grade. Our school building is kindergarten through eighth grade, which I'll show you in a moment. And we partner with Early Start for pre-K and we are a public charter school. So um, our campus is located at Armour and Broadway Boulevard. Um, as I mentioned, this is our kindergarten through eighth grade campus. Um, it was an old office building that we converted into a school with lovely uh, bright natural light and all the classrooms that we love and adore. We opened in 2016 with just kindergarten and first grade and we've expanded uh, pretty much a grade level every year since then. Our parents, uh, reached out and shared the desire for a middle school um, a little earlier than we had originally planned. So we did kind of um, already graduate our first group of eighth graders last year. Um, this is our mission. Uh, it is to provide an excellent public education focused on developing and demonstrating understanding while building connections within a diverse community. And I'm gonna break that apart a little bit and tell you um, in a minute about kind of our three main 
uh, pillars of our philosophy at Citizens. But I wanted to first tell you about our core values, um, which are excellence, diversity, authenticity, community, and change. And we do kind of uh, work hard to bring everything back to these core values. So I'll refer to some of them um, during this presentation. And uh, it's, it, yeah, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. <laughs> Um, our leaders, uh, Dr. Danielle Miles is our executive director, Mr. Troy Butler is our principal, and Mr. Daniel Manley is our assistant principal. We also have a director of student support and uh, director of special education, as well as coordinators and, and a large team, which you can discover on our website. But as far as our entire team here, we do uh, we've been working to diversify our staff over the last few years, so we're proud to have a diverse staff um, as far as backgrounds that they're bringing to us. Over 50% hold master's degrees and 50% have worked, lived, or studied outside of the United States. So and we do, um, we're excited. I'm sure you all know that over COVID, um, a lot of teachers chose to leave the profession. We're, and we did have some turnover during that time, but we're excited this year. We expect to have a very high retention rate into next year. So we'll be bringing a lot of previous knowledge that we can build upon um, in the coming years. So we're really excited about that. So one of our three main uh, pillars that we like to come back to is that we were designed as a diverse and inclusive community. The parents who really work to bring citizens to, and by the way, Citizens of the World is a national organization um, based out of Los Angeles. So they have a number of campuses in Los Angeles and uh, we partnered with them then to bring Citizens of the World to Kansas City. So that's a little bit of important background. Um, and those core values are from the nationwide uh, Citizens of the World. But we do believe that it's important to have a diverse community so that students can learn to work beside people that are different from them. Um, helps under, with self-understanding, empathy, compassion, all these fantastic qualities that we all want for our children. Um, and I do want to point out that we do have a racially diverse um, school community, but also socioeconomically um, and just in all backgrounds. We also use project-based learning at Citizens. We like to use really longer term projects um, rather than quick little units of study. So you'll notice in this picture we have um, in the bottom left, we have our fifth graders did the egg drop challenge. So they engineered uh, with a small team of others to create some kind of vehicle that could sustain a, an egg dropping from various heights. So that was a lot of fun. We had a lot of our school out there celebrating with those kids. You'll see we have um, our special education department maintains a chameleon cafe, they call it, where they sell snacks and spirit wear and coffee. So they go around every day with their cart and um, offer that to teachers and middle school students. Um, on the bottom right, you'll see our second graders had a, a long economics unit every year. And one of the highlights of that is when they do their marketplace, the first graders come with their fake money and use it to uh, purchase different snacks. Um, they usually, have, there's always a, a group that has nail painting or comic books, things like that. Um, so a lot of fun that we have with those projects. Uh, we are focused on the whole child. So even since the moment we opened, we worked really hard on our social emotional learning with our uh, school community. With our younger grades, we use conscious discipline, and with our older grades, we focus on restorative practices. So we want our students to feel safe and connected within the classroom, helping them, you know, learn, be able to learn better and be able to build those relationships with others. I'm going to pause now. Nina, did I miss any uh, any questions that have come up yet that I need to? No questions yet. Oh, yeah, actually, okay. you just got one. You just got oh, okay. one. Can you explain the conscious discipline? Oh, of course, of course. Um, yeah, so conscious discipline, excuse me, there we go. Conscious discipline is a parenting philosophy and a, we use it in the school as well. More and more schools are using it. Basically, it comes down to if a child feels safe and connected to um, others in their community, they're going to be in a better brain space to be able to um, learn and be open. We all know that when we feel a little triggered and worked up, 
we kind of switch into a brain space where we're in survival mode, fight and flight mode. So we try to help the children learn to self-regulate, come back to a safe place so that they're able to move forward in that. I hope that answered your question. Um, you can find a lot about it online as well. There's a little bit on our website, um, a little more information on our website as well. So here's some more, um, just some general information about what student life looks like. Our day starts at 8 a.m. and goes until 3.30 p.m. That's actual um, school day. We do offer extended care starting at 7 a.m. Students can come early and have breakfast at school. There's no cost to that. And we do have an extended day aftercare program as well that goes till 6 p.m. And that um, is for a cost. Um, it's pretty, comes down to just a few dollars an hour if you take if you uh, take full advantage of that and then we do offer scholarships and um, discounted rate for free and reduced lunch and for siblings we do have uniforms um, we do have catered meals for uh, breakfast lunch and dinner and those are available by the day you don't need to commit to the whole school year um, bringing or, or buying you can choose by the day after looking at the menu with your family we do have specials music art and pe our um, our kindergartners have, of course, two recesses, they have a rest time, and then most of our elementary classes use open learn time, which is uh, just a time in the classroom where children get to choose the way they want to learn. So they might decide to do some kind of building activity, they might choose to be, play math games or do imaginative play. We do have after school clubs. So these are 10 week sessions that students can sign up for as once a week. Things like cake decorating, chess club, introduction to soccer, uh, cooking club, based on what our teachers and our parents want to offer. That's a great way we bring out that core value of community where our uh, whole school community kind of pitches in to create those experiences for the children. We do have field trips, um, at least one a semester. Most of our grade levels are doing more than one each semester this year. And then we do have summer school in June as well. Uh, family engagement is really important to us at Citizens. We, um, as, as I mentioned, one of our core values is community. So we have family conferences once, once each semester and we always strive for 100% of participation in that. We have community events like our fall festival. We have uh, the Citizens Community Organization, which is our parent uh, and caregiver community um, organization. So they work on things like the uniform closet and volunteering around school. We do, of course, love for our caregivers to come be chaperones on field trips. We have other volunteer opportunities as well. And as I'll speak here in a moment, at First Fridays, we, uh, we offer some focus groups and things like that. So First Fridays is an extension of what we used to just call Friday Morning Sing. Um, when our school was new and little, our, our all of our students would get together in the multi-purpose room and uh, we're extending that a little bit now. It's looking a little bit different since we do have kindergarten all the way through eighth grade in our building. It's just gonna be once a month, but instead of just having it be a quick little thing down in the multipurpose room, we're extending it to include a classroom visit before Friday morning sing. And then at Friday morning sing, we're still gonna celebrate uh, birthday recognition, shout outs. We're gonna hopefully bring in some visitors from the community to do things like read alouds and, um, talk about what they're doing to make a difference in the community. And then we do have our school song and some chants that we do. And then we're gonna add after Friday morning sing some focus groups, maybe a coffee with the principal, different just social time so that families can get to know each other. I'm gonna show you just a quick little bit of this uh, Friday morning sing so you can get a little taste of what it's like. That's our principal, Mr. Butler. And so just to wrap things up, um, that is my direct phone number if you'd like to give me a call or text and you can find us in social media. We post a lot of pictures from inside the classroom so it can give you a great idea of what's actually happening in the school. And of course, um, check out our website for more information.
Thank you, Katie. I do have one clarifying question. The first Fridays are are those open to prospective families that maybe want to come in and oh, yeah. tour, or is there another opportunity to come in and physically see the building? Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, we, you know, since we're kind of re um, reimagining it a little bit, we're taking just a month off, but I do hope to offer a tour during that time as well, and we might. Uh, We'll see. I'm trying to convince convince us to be able to work it out for this time. But we do have tours at least once a week. I have a bunch planned here at the beginning of March. You can find that through our website and uh, we'd love to see you. I like to keep small group tours so that we can have lots of time for questions. No problem. So we have a parent that asked if uniforms were required and if so, how do families obtain the uniforms? Yeah, great question. We do have required uniforms. It's a, a yellow, green, or white top with khaki or black bottoms. And we also do have a uniform closet that we keep well stocked. So parents, uh, families can can donate items that they um, are done using and we're able to send that out. We also purchased some new things for the uniform closet. So we encourage all families to take advantage of that. Thanks. Thank you. All right, and we are going to kick it over to Crossroads Charter School. All righty, good morning. My name is Morgan Butler. I am the Community Engagement Manager over at Crossroads Charter Schools. Um, just want to share some information about Crossroads Charter Schools today. And then, like Nina said, if you have any questions, place them in the chat and I will try to address them to the best of my abilities. So Crossroads, oh, go back. Crossroads Charter Schools started out in 2012 with 190 students in grades K through five. The first campus was Crossroads Academy Central Street. That's located at 1011 Central Street, downtown Casey Mo. Um, Crossroads has grown tremendously and we saw the need for another elementary school building and we opened up our Quality Hill building that is located at 1080 Washington, also downtown and both of our buildings are walking distance from one another. Um, Crossroads now has actually expanded to encompass um, pre-K. We partner with uh, Early Start as well for a pre-K classroom, but Crossroads goes all the way from pre-K to 12th grade, and we can serve over 1,000 students now. Um, we also just currently received our 10-year high-quality charter renewal from the Missouri State Board of Education this past summer, and that is something that we've celebrated greatly, and we would like our parents to know. For methods of instruction, we have uh, what we call the co-teaching model. Um, the co-teaching model allows teachers to utilize their strengths and bounce ideas off one another, um, get feedback on their teaching, of course, and rotate small groups of children for individualized instruction if necessary. And um, it allows students to hear from multiple sources to um, grow their learning skills and um, learn things in a variety of different ways. Um, of course, co-teaching can look different based on the classroom because of course, all children are not the same and they are different in each classroom. Just as um, Citizens and Gordon Parks mentioned, we also have what we call project-based learning. Um, for our project-based learning, um, an example that I could give now, um, our first graders this year, they had a project surrounding community and neighborhoods and what it looks like to be a part of a community. So our first graders were able to go out and um, on a learning expedition or field trips as they might be called to the Constantino that is located downtown and go into that grocery store and learn about produce and how groceries affect the community. Um, they also had themed friendship day boxes for Valentine's Day. Um, they were able to create a box to collect their um, friendship day treats um, based off of something that they think helps or they've seen in the community. We saw um, chief stadium boxes, we saw school bus boxes, all kinds of different boxes that um, looked like something that they saw in the community that helps the people around them. Um, they also had a visitor come into their classroom that works in construction and that was able to let them know how construction 
helps the community. So that is um, one of the large projects that the first graders had this year. In addition to that, each spring we have First Friday art exhibits where students can display their work. And we also partner with the Nelson Atkins Museum to have student workshops for students as well. Um, we like to think of the community partnerships that we have to be extensions of our classroom. So one of the things that we are able to utilize is the Central Downtown Library um, as our school library. So students take walking trips to the library very often and are able to um, utilize the books there. The, um, one of the other methods of instructions that we have would be utilizing technology within the classroom. Um, being able to utilize technology offers a robust learning experience for our students. So we can use multiple digital learning platforms, but then also have the balance of teacher instruction as well, and uh, many student collaboration groups and independent learning. Oh, next slide. So we have a lot of classroom supports for our students as well. Um, we offer individualized instruction and services for students, which include but aren't limited to social emotional learning coordinators. We have our school counselors at each of our buildings. We have a full blown SPED department that can offer services to students that may need them. Um, we have English language learner classroom supports and supports for families as well. So we don't just offer the English language learner supports to students. We have that included our families as well. So all of our documentation and things like that are sent over to the families in their native language so that they can feel supported. We also have on-site speech and language pathologists and math and reading specialists for um, individualized instruction for students that may need those supports as well. We also offer a PACE classroom, which is um, a tr transitional kindergarten classroom that we call um, Preparing All Children for Excellence. That classroom is a one to 10 student to teacher ratio um, that gives the students a extra year to prepare for the traditional kindergarten classroom in case they are needing more time to prepare themselves to be ready for the traditional kindergarten students. We um, also have it here, but we also have a restorative practice here in regards to discipline. We also just received some grants to be able to um, place restorative justice coordinators in both of our elementary school buildings. So we're excited about that. Um, we have a ton of support for um, families. Um, we have the Parent Action Committee, we, which we call our PAC crew. Mm -hmm. The sorry, my phone's ringing. The um, parent action committee has um, family nights that they come in and join us for. Um, we just recently had a STEM and women's night. We have a cultural um, cultural celebration. So this week we're actually going to be having our Black History and Family Night. Um, back in October, we had a Latinx Heritage Night, and we um, tried to get all of the parents to come in so we can celebrate all of that. We also offer a uniform closet and a care closet, so students in need of uniforms or medicines and items from our pantry may utilize that support as well. For special course offerings on a rotating basis, we have our specials of visual arts, performing arts, PE, and health. Um, outside of those special courses on a rotating basis, we do require that our students take STEM class. So that's science, technology, engineering, math. That happens every day. We have instructors for K through 12, I mean, K through second grade, and then third through fifth grade. So there are two different STEM instructors inside of each building. At our Central Street location, we have STEM classrooms. And at our Quality Hill location, we have those two STEM instructors actually instructors actually go into the classroom to teach that curriculum to the students. Um, at both of our buildings, we have what we call enrichment clubs, which are, include but aren't limited to yearbook and chess club. We also have cooking classes when there are enough students that are participating in performing arts and theater. Um, some of the frequently asked questions that I get, um, 
would be, does Crossroads offer transportation? And yes, we do, as long as students live um, one mile away from their designated school campus, they can receive transportation on the bus to come to school. We currently do not offer before and after school programs inside of our buildings, but we partner with community, uh, community places, one of which that's very popular is Y Care because there's a YMCA that is located directly next door to us that pa um, parents are able to sign their children up for for before and after school programs. But we also partner with other community um, agencies around the city, like the Boys and Girls Club. And if students utilize those programs, we do we can offer transportation to them to and from their before and after school care programs. We also have the free and reduced lunch program for families. So families are able to sign up for that at the beginning of the school year. And if they qualify, they would then receive a free lunch um, every day or a reduced price. And of course, students can bring their own lunch too. Um, but those are some of the things that we offer. And then I just wanted to end the presentation with this quick little video and um, could you nod your head if you can hear because um, it does have sound. Can you hear? Crossroads Charter School was started in 2012. We wanted to create a school where whoever you are, student or staff, you can be creative, you can be who you are and you can and learn and grow together. We do a lot of student choice for staff too. Like they love having that creativity and you know flexibility. There's no script here. So like you can be your true self. One idea that a teacher had was um, she had her students at recess. They heard some um, men speaking. They were speaking French. The men were black men and the kids were you know, ask the teacher, like, we didn't know Black people spoke French. She took that moment, they did this whole study on that and why different people speak different. And plus, kids got to know you could be Black, Brown, White, whatever, and you can speak whatever language is, so. This is my ninth year here at Crossroads. We've kind of built the school that we've envisioned, but I think we've come upon things that even have made this even better than what may have been originally envisioned at the beginning. I enjoy being in the classroom with my students. We focus on a lot of growth mindset. I'm trying to set them up for success for taking ownership of their learning. They continue on with that feeling of, I can do this, I can make it happen. I want them to not only notice that I'm feeling proud for what they're doing, but that they also feel pride in their own work and I feel that what they're doing is important. Crossroads is, is unique in many ways. It begins in the classrooms and the quality of teaching, but it goes further than that in the, that they become part of an urban environment. You see them over at the library see them in the parks, the investments that we've made in Crossroads in facilities and programs have been very rewarding. Crossroads is recognized as a leader. I think it's a showpiece to have what is recognized as one of the best schools in Missouri be in downtown Kansas City. It makes me feel extremely proud to be a part of this Crossroads community as a parent, as a staff member, and as a friend too. My youngest son struggled with math a bit. We have been lucky enough to have very supportive teachers that have been consistent, that have provided the support that he needed and have been patient most of all. Now Isaiah is in a place where he feels very comfortable with math, which I never thought we would get there. So if my kids were not able to have access to the quality education that they have right now, I know that we would be struggling. As a family, it is definitely a blessing that we found this school. Crossroads, no matter what we go through, we do not give up. We always find a way and no one is left behind. My passion for teaching comes from me myself being a kid who didn't have representation. 
I grew up in the suburbs and there was never any teachers of color, but it's super important for me for kids to see themselves in me, to walk through the door and feel hyped up and feel loved and feel like, you know, you're important to me. I see you, I appreciate you, I love you being here and I want you to be successful and wholeheartedly mean that. I think one thing that has drawn me to Crossroads is that no matter where you go, the work is always gonna be there. But one thing that makes the work easier is when you enjoy the people that you work with. In that time, we make families feel heard and seen and more importantly, like kids feel heard. We've been here for 10 years, changing lives. Like kids have graduated, that started with us, and are on their path because of us. It makes me so proud of like peeling off paint off the stairs and trying to move in furniture and sitting in the classroom that had wires hanging out. Like, this thing's gonna happen. But it did. It makes me feel extremely accomplished. We are forever and always forward striving, forward moving. We are an organization of fight and of passion. Being here at our team here in university is an honor. It's good to look back and to see all the growth of uh, our students and staff and our great parents and our donors as well. If we couldn't do this, if we did not have community, we've opened three schools in 10 years, right? And the whole plan is just to open one school. But I got tricked into opening two more. So <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Thank you, Morgan. I don't see any questions that came through the chat, but that is all of the presentations that we have from schools today. So we do want to save time here to see if any of our participants have any questions for our schools before we log off. We want to make sure that any questions that you have get answered now. Um, while we're waiting for questions to come in, I do want to give a reminder about lottery offer dates that are coming up. Kansas City Public School will send out offers for their signature school lotteries on February 27th, and schools participating in School App KC, which would include the schools that we heard from today, the lotteries will go out on March 6th. Um, I do want to pause. Feel free to come off mute and ask a question if you have one. I got a question. Um, is there any chance I can get a copy of like some of the PowerPoints? Just because it's a lot of information in the process and like it'd be nice to be able to go back and look over. Yes, yeah, so schools, if you have information that you're willing to share, if you could send that to me and then I can email it out to families um, were you able to sign up via our Eventbrite link? Me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I just got an email from after I applied on School App and I applied on there. Okay. Um, go ahead and drop your email in the chat so I can grab it and I'll make sure I'll send you that follow up. And then I'll also send you over our school guide that contains some information for other schools as well. All right. Thank you. No problem. Nina, do you mind if I explain the application and lottery process just a little bit, give a brief overview? Sure. Okay, so for the schools that we were able to hear from today, Gordon Parks Elementary, Citizens of the World, and Crossroads, these are all public charter schools that currently participate in School App KC, which is a common application system that sounds like some of you have already created accounts and applied for some of the schools that you're interested in. Um, there are many schools on that platform. You can apply for as many that you are interested in. Um, we highly encourage you to do so prior to March 1st, which is the lottery deadline. I know we had a question about what that actually means. And so I'm gonna use kindergarten as an example. If any given school, let's say has two kindergarten classes um, with 25 students each, they will potentially have up to 50 kindergarten seats available for the 20 
um, three 24 school years starting in August. If more than 50 families apply for those seats, then that school will hold a lottery in that grade, um, which is as long as you have submitted an application prior to March 1st, you'll be included in it. It's computer generated and it's randomized and the computer will fill the 50 seats and have offers out to those family for the amount of seats that the school has available. The rest of the families that applied would then be given a waitlist number. I think it's really important for families to know that oftentimes, and we encourage you to apply to at least two schools, um, you know, to have as part of your, uh, you know, process and, um, and then um, know that other families are getting offers um, or more than one offer for their one student. So wait lists can move around. So don't feel too discouraged if you find yourself on a wait list. That can, that can definitely um, change, um, especially prior to the start of the school year. If you did not apply by a deadline, as I said earlier on the call, um, we still encourage you to submit an application. It just means that your application may go on to a wait list if there is one in the order that it is received. Um, and again, that is very individualized for each school and each grade level, depending on your student's um, age. Uh, sometimes schools do have priorities with their lotteries. And what that means is if you have a student who um, it already attends one of these schools. Let's say, you know, you have a third grader at Citizens of the World, and now you have a kindergartner who's going to start and you've applied, you're going to get a sibling priority um, because the goal is to, to keep families in, in the same school if that's what they desire. Uh, let's see. Let me pull up the chat here. I think we had some, some other things coming in. Nina, do you want to layer in on any of that? Yeah, thank you. So um, we did have a question that came in regarding uh, students being enrolled in one school, but potentially thinking about transferring to another school. We would encourage you to secure your student seat in their current school. So completing re-enrollment at the current school. When or if you do decide to transition and go to a new school and you would accept an offer at a new school, we highly encourage you to notify your students current school so that they can make proper arrangements and backfill that seat so that they're good to go for day one of the school year so um, it's a not guarantee that you'll receive an offer so you absolutely want to complete the re-enrollment process so you do have a guaranteed seat but if you do decide to transfer schools and you receive and accept an offer from another school definitely, definitely notify your student school so that they know and can properly plan. Um, it also, we had a question come in about, do I reapply every year? What is that process like? Once you are enrolled in a school, you will have to complete what most schools call re-enrollment. Um, and that is just a packet of information that you complete year to year that just updates contact information, updates on medications, things like that, um, just so student, or the school can prepare for students for the upcoming school year. But you will not have to go through the lottery process every year once you are enrolled in a school. So you will have to complete re-enrollment for the school and they'll send out information on when that opens up and when it needs to be completed. But you don't have to worry about going through that lottery every year until you're in a natural transition grade um, and maybe your school ends in fifth grade and you need to apply for middle school or high school and so on and therefore. Make sense? Awesome. Do you have any other questions? Anything else while you still have us? I do want to thank our schools for joining us and sharing a little bit about the schools. Um, many of them mentioned having opportunities to come in and see the school. We will send out contact information for our reps. And so feel free to contact them to learn more about opportunities to actually physically go into the building, see those classrooms, see students. It's amazing to see that. If you have some more questions or maybe you have some individual needs that you kind of want to talk through with people and you want to kind of get to the nitty gritty of what your students need and you really just need some support in figuring that out, I strongly encourage you to reach out to our navigation team. 
Danielle, who was guiding us through the application process, is our director of school navigation for Show Me KC Schools. We're going to drop her contact information here in the chat. Feel free to reach out. Um, we can set up one-on-one -on -one appointments with you to talk over school options, things that you want to see in the school, specific things that may be going on with your student. You just want to make sure that you selected the right schools to apply to. We're happy to support you in that journey.